Yum, yum. Greg here from Pixel Fondue. In this video, I'm going to make a procedural jellyfish animated and everything. So yeah, let's just jump right into it. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do actually with my empty mesh selected here is press space to bring up, whoops, press space to bring up mini props. I'll rename it Bell. This will be the jellyfish Bell. I'm gonna click add draw options. I'm just gonna change the colors a bit so it's a little more visible. In my viewport here when I start drawing some curves, purple shows up pretty well, so I'll just do sort of a magenta. And then I'll pick my spline tool and control space to go to the front view. And then I'm going to tap X to bring up uh, snapping. And then I'm going to make sure I'm on grid snapping and not vertex snapping. So grid snapping and click and create a point at X equals zero for your first, uh, first vertex. And I'm going to tap X again to turn off snapping just so I have a little more uh, you know, free freedom to where I want to place my points. When I get down here, and I'm, again, I'm just creating the profile of the bell. And I want to make sure there's a couple points maybe three kind of close together down here. And then I'll start moving up. And jellyfish bells are actually pretty thick. They're not they're not like, you know, paper thin things. They're actually pretty thick. The entire, you know, body of it is on the inside. And I'm gonna press X just again to turn on grid snapping and snap the last point to X equals zero. Click X to turn it off again. And then I'll just pop back here in perspective view and there's my uh, first curve. And then I'll pop open the, whoops, not the image list, but the procedural modeling uh, operator list here or viewport, add operator, and we'll do a curve rebuild. And the first, uh, the reason I'm doing this first is I wanna be able to control the number of points I have on my curve in order to just sort of control the um, resolution of all the deformations that are gonna be going on. So if I turn this off, there's my original points, right? When I just drew it. I turn this on, I've got 20, but I can just, you know, press C for channel hall, and with Omni Hall, I can right click and get as many points as I want. And so I want to settle on something, we'll maybe just start with like 36 and see if that gives us a nice, uh, a nice, nice number of points for deformation. Okay, press C to drop uh, Omni Hall. And add operator, let's do a radial sweep, and that'll swing our jellyfish around there. I do want to then select my bell, hit space, and turn off uh, draw style from wireframe back to default. And I can just also toggle control one, turn my verts off. You'll see that it's inverted. So there's a couple of, of adjustments I wanna make here to radial sweep. Number one, instead of polygon, I wanna use edge. And if you actually, if you look at it, um, let me just actually go to wireframe view. You see all the, like, there's a vast number of points here. Uh, polygons actually going to freeze that curve into polygons and then sweep it. So if I go to edge, it's actually going to be the number of points I have there. So if I actually look at my curve rebuild, turn off my radial sweep and turn on my points, I'm going to have an edge in, in uh, edge mode everywhere there's a point. And so if I turn this back on, you'll see each of those points is now an edge. Whereas if it was polygon, it's going to put them, it's just sort of going to freeze my curve really dense, see all those points and then do it. So you don't want polygon, you want edge. And just going back to advanced viewport here, if it's inverted, it shouldn't be, but if it is, you can invert it with this little button here. You can also press space for uh, channel, uh, I'm sorry, mini props. And let's turn off cap start and end because we're not capping it. Um, we actually went all the way to zero. Remember we snapped to zero. So we have nice, you know, watertight mesh here. All right, so there's our basic uh, bell, right? And we can do things like adjust our curve rebuild if we want more resolution or radial sweep. If I press C for channel hall, again, right, right click is always gonna adjust resolution, right? So right click for more revolutions. Let's maybe do 48 instead of 24. And remember on curve rebuild, if I just click that, I still have channel hall active. I can just adjust the number of segments in that direction. I think I had 36. We'll just keep it there for now. And press C to drop it. And now we're going to make the dangly tentacles next. So I'm gonna actually go to uh, edge mode, press two, double click an edge and get an edge loop there. Let me turn off um, uh, verts there so you can see it. And then I'm going to come over here to the edge uh, side panel and click edges to curves. And I'm gonna click create a new mesh, spline curve is fine, hit okay. And you'll see I've got a curve mesh here. And if I turn off my bell, it's just, I don't know if you can see it very well, the, orange there. I actually, I really wish Moto had variable um, thickness for the for the splines and curves in the viewport so you can crank it up kind of like you, you can adjust point size. But since we don't have that, I will usually change it to a color so you can see it better. So again, let me just add draw options and go to wireframe, uh, wireframe to user color and user color to this sort of purpley. And you know, hopefully that's a little bit easier to see there. Turn off the grid. So 
All right, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this as a basis to create points to hang our hangy tentacles from, right? So we need the hangy tentacles or the stinging tentacles. Uh, there's actually two types of tentacles on a jellyfish. There's the stinging tentacles with the nematocyst, the stinging cells. Now on the interior, there's actually a different kind of tentacle, which is a feeding tentacle, where it pulls up the fish or the shrimp into the feeding tentacles. And they actually have a mouth typically here, not typically, the bell jellyfish always should have a mouth there that the uh, feeding tentacles will sort of draw the fish up to and uh, start the digestion process. We're not gonna get that sort of complicated on this one. We're just going to do the uh, stinging tentacles. Okay, so we'll start with our curve mesh. I'm going to create a couple more items here. So add item, I'm going to add a curve particle generator. Okay, curve particle generator. And I'm also going to add a replicator right here. And I'm also gonna press in for a new mesh item. You can also just, of course, go add item and new mesh item here. And I'm gonna pop up my mini props. We'll call this uh, stinging, stinging tentacle. Or no, how about tentacle prototype? Tentacle proto, there we go. Because this will be the prototype for a replicator. So again, I'm gonna go to the front view and I'm gonna go to wireframe this time. And I think I'm actually going to hide my bell and turn on my grid and we'll be doing this from zero, zero, zero. So let's go back to a spline here and X for uh, snapping and snap at zero, 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 turn X off and just do a bit of a hangy tentacle shape down like so. We can always make it bigger if we want to. I think that's good, just like that. In fact, I can pop up my mini props and make this a slightly different color. So draw style wireframe, wireframe user, and wireframe color, maybe a cyan color there. So there's our stingy cat tentacle, and we're going to replicate that along this uh, circle here. And to give us some variability options, we're gonna use the curve particle generator. So if I didn't use the curve particle generator, and I just took my replicator and said, okay, my prototype's gonna be my uh, tentacle proto, and my point source is gonna be the curve mesh, then I get that, right? Well, I don't want that, and I, I want to have a little more control over it. So let me just turn off my point source here to none, and uh, my curve particle generator wants an input curve, and that's gonna be our curve mesh. So now this circular mesh is feeding into our curve particle generator. If I drag it down here into the schematic, you can see that. Let me just make sure, make sure both your um, channel connections and schematic connections or graph connections. These purple ones are, are visible. When you see a little yellow diamond, as you know, you just double click that and you can see it. So you see our, our curve is feeding into our curve particle generator. And our curve particle generator is gonna give us, you know, it's gonna let us choose a number of points. It's gonna resample around the curve, but it also gives us some interesting control options with scale jitter and position jitter and stuff like that, which we'll use in a second. But the first thing we need to do is sort of finesse this um, replicator into shape. So I'm gonna to go to the replicator. I've already got my prototype set up, the tentacle proto, and the point source is going to be our curve particle generator. Here you can see it's, it's a little, you know, wonky, not quite right. So let me just turn off the uh, curve mesh here so we can just focus on these two guys. In fact, I can turn off my uh, tentacle proto as well. And I'm just gonna focus on getting this replication correct. So let's look at the options on the curve particle generator and on the CPG control tab, we see that we have a forward axis of Z. And while it looks like these are short, what's actually happening here is the, the curve is starting our tentacle curve. Let me just turn that back on. See, it's kind of long, but it's actually starting here and it's traveling all the way across the mesh and down. It just needs to be rotated. So let me hide my tentacle prototype there. And under control gradients, I'm gonna pop that up you see particle rotation. I'm going to just open that in editor so I can adjust it via this uh, graph instead of doing keyframes here on this gradient. Just select both of these and middle mouse drag up. You can see them coming down here, right? So keep dragging up until they spray out. You actually want it around 25%. 25% of 360 degrees is what, 90 degrees, right? So we actually just rotated those 90 degrees. And that's, that's what we wanted. So I turn my bell back on. And we've got my bell, and we've got our curves there, right? So it's starting to look like a jellyfish now, but not quite. Let's do a little more work on these curves, right? So our curve particle generator, like I said, has some interesting features here. First thing I'm gonna do is just up the point count. Again, you can press C for Omni Hall, and I believe, actually, maybe, does this have default Omni Hall? Actually, it doesn't. So just click point count, and now it's it defaults with Omni Hall on by pressing C. You can just uh, left mouse drag for the point count like that, and kind of, 
thicken it up a little bit. So maybe around maybe around 50 like that. And then we'll go over here to the CPG control and adjust some of these jitters. And one of the cool ones, let me actually go to advanced uh, mode here, is the linear position jitter. So if I just select it and press C for channel hall, I can kind of zoom in and, and you know drag this uh, interactively. And what it'll do is it'll sort of space these out. It'll jitter the spacing so it's not such an even spacing around that initial circle. So I can just drag this a little bit. So you get a little bit of, you know, a little more, you know, larger gaps here and smaller gaps here. Just a little bit of jittering in the spacing. I can also, actually, I think this looks better in wireframe mode. Let me just kind of push in here again so you can see it. So again, you can see how it sort of jitters around in the spacing there. And so we'll keep that, you know, something low, like 6%. And then let's do a scale jitter. So let me pull back a little bit and do a little bit of a scale jitter. And this one, you know, adds a, a ton to the realism, obviously. So if I control Z that, it, that, that looks like a computer jellyfish, <laughs> you know, everything's perfect. But if I just drag the scale jitter a little bit, all of a sudden, just that little bit of like jitter and scale on the tentacles, like adds so much to the realism of it. There's a rotation jitter as well, which will rotate these curves around the outside of those particles. So if I do, do it a lot, you see I'm rotating a ton. But I just want a little bit again. You know, maybe like five degrees or something, just giving a sort of a natural variation of these tentacles. So that's looking pretty good. I think that's all we need here for now. You can do some other stuff with, um, you can actually use the, the scale, uh, particle scale gradient here if you want to do some more precise control, but there's some other tutorials on Pixel Fondue with the, that you can look at to see how these work or just experiment with it. But I think that's good enough for now. I'm actually looking at this. I'm thinking my bell is a little too a little too flat and pointy. So I'm actually going to go back and change the bell. This is the nice thing about um, you know working procedurally is I can just go change this whenever I want to. So I can look in here. I'm actually going to turn off uh, the radial sweep. Let me look, look to the front here. And let me just go back to, uh, uh, you know, I'm on wireframe mode. Let me turn off curve rebuild. And I'm just going to show my vertices and I'm going to pull this one up just a little bit so it's a little bit flatter on the top there. I just want a little bit a little bit chunkier, a little chunkier, a little chunkier jellyfish, something like this maybe. I think it was looking a little bit better than what I had before. And so you can turn these two guys back on and just make, click the bell. Let's go into uh, advanced mode, turn off our um, verts there, turn on wireframe. I'm using Control one a lot to toggle wireframe, toggle verts, stuff like that. Control 2 to change my shading mode to advanced and wireframe. Control space to go from like right or front or perspective view. Control one, control two, control space. Absolutely need to, you know, lock those into your memory. I don't think these tentacles are showing up super well, so let me just change that tentacle proto color just a little bit so you can see them better on the YouTube. Maybe something like that. Okay. All right, so jellyfish is looking pretty good. So let's add some movement. And you might be thinking, well, how are you gonna move these replicated particles or these replicated tentacles in a natural way? Because right now, you know, we're, we're looking at a replicator. They're not, you know, true geometry, right? Well, I'm gonna go to my bell and I'm going to add a new operator. I'm gonna add a merge mesh and I'm gonna merge my replicator in. So the geometry it, from this replicator is going to be merged in as actual curves. So we'll just do merge mesh and sources add source and we'll do existing and there's my replicator. There it is. And so if I turn off my replicator now, you'll see my tentacles are still here. And if I want to grab some points, you can see I'm grabbing points on the tentacles, right? So um, again, we'll go to wireframes so you can see a little bit better. So now it's all one piece of geometry and I can deform this now as one piece of geometry. So pretty cool. So in order to deform it, I'm just going to add a transform effector. So add and transform effector right here. It's also under the deform folder right here, deform, uh, or at least it should be, <laughs> transform effector. You know what I've noticed is I've noticed that transform effector sometimes doesn't show up in the, uh, uh, no, not deform, deformers, that's where it should be. <laughs> so effectors, Transform effector, there it is, yeah, okay. Transform effector, basically what it is, if you, if you haven't used deformers much in Moto, what it's doing is it's is it's going to use this, what's called an influence, and it's saying we're gonna take the entire mesh, so the influence determines what part of the mesh is gonna be deformed, and we want the entire mesh. We could also limit it to a weight map, or a vertex selection map, or a material, or a part, or a polygon selection set. So a lot of options there, and the actual influence on which geometry is going to be deformed, 
And then the influence also connects to a transform effector right here, you see right there. And that's just a regular transform, and that transform effector is going to, you know, we're going to input our transform properties in there to do the transform. So if I press R for uh, scale, I can squeeze it out here with the little planar one. So I'm just going to kind of squish it out, flatten it out. I'm also going to use this green handle to squish it down a little bit. So it's flattened out and squished down. We'll just make it uh, nice and easy. 140, 80, 140. Okay, and so that's not super exciting, but what we're gonna do is we're going to run this through a fall off and animate a gradient through there. So stick with me, this is all gonna make sense. So press Q to drop your transform tool there and over here under fall off, so I'm gonna click add new fall off and I'm gonna type in linear fall off. We'll get a linear fall off going on here. And there you see it, press space for mini props. You want actually want this in Y I actually want to invert it. So it's gonna look like this. Let me just sort of look at the front view here. Now, now the fall off is affecting the transform. That scale transform we just did, it's going to be 100% of the top of this fall off and it's gonna taper it down to 0% of the bottom. So if I just press the move tool and start moving this fall off, as I move it down, everything's going to eventually get 100% of this transform, that scale we did, right? So now it's all being scaled. I think, well, it was 140 on X and Z and, and 80 on Y. And if I move it all the way up this way, it, there's our original jellyfish with no transform because it's underneath zero on the fall off. What I wanna do is position the fall off near the bottom like so, and then press C for channel hall and then middle mouse the range back up to the top. And so I'm sort of encompassing this whole jelly now, right? So right now the jelly at the top is getting 100% of this transform and it's tapering down to nothing at the bottom. And what I want to do is run a gradient through here, a waveform, right? To get that sort of oscillating movement of a jellyfish. And so I have to use the schematic for that. So I'm just going to pull out of the schematic here. I'm just going to drag my linear fall off down here to the schematic. And I want to drag this gradient into the linear fall off. The gradient controls the easing, right? So right now, if I click uh, this little gear icon and set it to like medium height, you can see it's just a linear... Um, line here a linear curve if i you know click and drag get one of those keys and middle mouse down now i'm turning it all to zero everywhere here i'm turning it back up to 100 so you see how that works so i want 100 everywhere i move it up here it'd be nice if this fall off shape actually changed while i did this but it doesn't even though this is going down to a point of zero i actually have it set to 100 in the in the easing gradient but let's just put it back down to zero and we're actually going to bring this gradient into the, into the schematic so in the channels here Make sure you don't have a, the filter, anything typed in the filter. You'll see uh, the word gradient down here. Let me just drag down. Here's the word gradient, and I'm just gonna drag that in. You'll see it appear at the bottom of the linear fall off. I can come back over to my tool properties and control click the gradient to deselect it. And I'm going to add a gradient over here. So under the uh, gradient heading, you'll see a gradient waveform, or you can just type in gradient waveform like that. Hit enter, you'll get it here. And you'll see this has some uh, channels, amplitude, frequency, offset. I'm gonna, and then also uh, sines, uh, square, triangle, saber tooth. Keep it at sign. You know what we're doing here. We're running a sine wave through this gradient. So now you'll see what's happening here is we have a sort of a, a sine wave running through here. And if I come over here to the frequency, or I'm sorry, the offset, and you'll see I've got, you know, channel hall active. If I press C, I can have uh, my Omni Hall on. I can click and drag the offset. And you just see dragging, you see I'm getting that jellyfish movement, right? And so I'm just running a sine wave through that linear fall off. So it's changing the effect of our transform, you know, over time, it's gonna be changing the effect of our transform along the length of this jellyfish. So pretty good, right? So let's actually set up a couple keyframes here, put my offset back to zero. And then at frame zero, I'm just gonna press S to set a key. And then I'll drag to 150 and we'll turn this to, actually let's just go to 100 and maybe set this to offset of three. Um, we can bring up our graph here just to take a look at it. We don't want it to be eased, we want it to be linear. So I'll just turn the entire curve to linear and we actually want a linear ending there. So it just keeps on going after frame 100. And if I drag through here, you'll see this is going, right? Okay, there's also like way too much. So we got way too much going on. So at this point, we're gonna be finessing our motion. So we've got a lot of motion going on. So I'm gonna turn the amplitude down to like 0.7. A little better. 
if you look at this in perspective view, just hit play. A little fast, a little much. So I'm actually going to go back to this keyframe instead of a value of three, let's do two. And then amplitude maybe 0.65 or so. And then hit play. Okay, looking a little better there. Looking pretty good actually, but I think we can do better. So let's keep on working on this a little bit. So uh, hit play there. Also, you know, I've customized my moto to um, you know, when I'm hovering over the graph uh, or the time slider and I hit space, it actually plays the animation. I may, maybe I'll do a video on that. It's an, it just works if you use Premiere or whatever or editing program and you're constantly, you know, if you want to hit space to play, it's, it's nice to have that customization over your timeline or your graph editor, right? So if I'm over the timeline or the graph editor, it'll it'll do the play. Okay, anyway. So I'll go back to zero and I'm gonna go back to my schematic and I'm going to make this a little bit better. So little diamond here on the linear fall off, I double click it, I will get my transform uh, influence, just this guy right here. And so again, if I uh, click here, I'll see my effector. If I clicked this one, I would see the uh, bell geometry. You don't need to do that though. I think we're just gonna show these. Just kind of move my uh, surface particle generator, or curve particle generator over a little bit. I move this up just a little bit to focus in a lot. And so, you know, I want a little different sort of um, effect on the fall off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna blend a couple of fall offs. So I'm actually gonna disconnect my linear fall off here. You see it going back to the you know scale on the entire object. Scooch it over and I'm going to add and say uh, blend fall off. And so I'm gonna add a blend fall off and connect that to my fall offs. And you should actually, if I click my bell here, you'll see it right here now in the fall off slot. There's my bend fall off or blend fall off. And I'm gonna set the blend mode to multiply and I'm going to plug in this one uh, linear fall off that I already have um, into the fall offs. Like, whoops, not, not this one. I want the purple, the graph one into here. And so that's gonna work fine. All right, that's just gonna work like we had it before, but we're actually gonna multiply that up against another fall off just to adjust our, our, um, our uh, deformation a little bit because I want some deformation here, not so much at the top of the bell, I want the most deformation like kind of around here or to really balloon out around there. So I'm going to add another linear fall off right there and I'm going to again press space we'll put it on Y and on this one uh, it doesn't matter if it's inverted or not um, I'll go ahead and invert it so we'll just sort of match it up to the last one just kind of do it like this press C for range make it a little bit bigger and then uh, C again to drop my channel hall W for the um, move tool maybe a little bigger on range middle mouse drag, W for move, something like that. And then I'm going to connect this into my fall off here. So I've got two fall offs going on and we're blending them together. So it's, it's a very different looking uh, animation now because this is actually, remember, this is going down to zero here. So I'm multiplying zero against this original fall off here. So we're getting no motion at all down here. Well, that's not what we want. We actually just want to pull this one up. So we're getting a lot of motion down there. In fact, I'm gonna pull it um, all the way up to 100%. And I'm gonna drag the top one down just a little bit. And then I'm gonna middle mouse in here, drag it over to approximately this area. So this right-hand side is the top of our guy. And so it's a little less than 100% of the top and 100% down here at the very bottom of the tentacles. And I'm gonna middle mouse drag this key up. Actually, I think I need to open this in the editor to go over 100%. So again, we grab this key, drag it up a little bit. I'm gonna put the end behaviors as constant so they don't go linear off into uh, infinity there. So just like that. And basically what I'm doing is I'm saying on the left-hand side, I wanna multiply pretty much the same effect. I, I like the effect I'm getting from the original fall off on the tentacles, but I feel it's too much at the top of the bell, so I'm moving that down a little bit, and I want it a little more across just the top third of the bell, and so I'm gonna 
move this up a little bit, maybe right click, drag over. So right click will drag left and right, middle click will drag up and down. So it kinda, if I drag this up, you can kind of see what's happening there. I'm actually a little too far to the left because you saw most of the motion going right there. I actually want to right click and drag it over a little bit like here. And as I cycle through this, there we go, something like that. Want to really flatten out, yeah. So the top doesn't go too crazy, because I've knocked it down just a little bit. But I get a little, little more action in the bell than I am in the tentacles there. So that's just one way to do it. And uh, yeah, so there we go. So let me just hide the deformers. Let's maybe look at it in perspective view. Hit play. Looking pretty cool there. All right, so we're gonna do a couple more things just to make it a little more realistic. Let me look at, at the, uh, in this view here, a little bit better. Okay. Just kind of drag through. So you'll notice right here that we don't want any overlap in these edges right at the very edge of the bell. That's one of the reasons we, if I go back to my base mesh here, that I put a, a couple of, of uh, whoops, go back to my base mesh, a couple of points like this one point right here, because I don't want, I want a little bit of separation between these two on either side when it's doing that motion. Okay, turn off, um, turn on wireframe, go back to perspective view. And I'm gonna do one more blend. So I'm actually going to uh, unplug my fall offs again. Let me just go back to wire. I think wire actually looks better for this. And drag these down. And I'm going to add a, another blend fall off because I wanna blend a texture fall off in, in with this first blend. So I'm gonna plug my blend fall off two into fall offs. And then for the first slot in my blend fall off, we're gonna have this whole blend fall, this, this other blend we've already set up, that's gonna be the first one in here. And the second one is going to be a texture fall off. And I, for this second blend fall off, I'm gonna keep it to add. What I'm doing here is I'm just gonna add a little bit of noise and literally add, like add some noise texture or add a noise texture or a texture fall off with some noise into this whole deformation going on here. So I add a texture fall off. Just kind of drag down until you see a yellow one. Texture fall off, there it is. Double click, bring it in the scene. That's gonna be our second one. So there we go. So the texture fall off is gonna add its fall off effect into this blend fall off here. And we need a noise texture. So we'll just type noise. And the one we want, there's tons of noises in Moto. And if you have Octane install, installed, there's a bunch of noises. Let's go all the way down to the bottom where it says texture layers, textures, we want this noise. That's just the basic moto noise. In fact, if you look at the shady tree under nodes, you'll see it's now showed up here, right? So it's a nice little, nice little thing there. And I'm actually going to, I can double click and get my texture locator out if I want to, it doesn't really matter. Um, but I'm gonna change the noise from uh, fractal to simple. I'm gonna plug this in to my uh, textures right there. And you'll see it changed a little bit. It's a little bit lumpy now, if I look at it. See how it's all kind of lumpy? So we're adding in this noise deformation in with these nice blended linear deformations here. And so I'm just gonna do a little adjustments. You know, grab the texture locator. And let's make this you know, a little bit smaller, maybe 0.33. Uh, maybe that's a little too small. Maybe, maybe 0.66, something like that. And yeah, I'm gonna actually lessen the effect of this just a little bit. I can press C for channel hall and then right click drag for the strength. So I'm just gonna drag it down a little bit. I want a little bit of noise, but not a ton. So you can see it in the tentacles, a little bit of noise. Yeah, and so let's just press play, see what it looks like. Probably a little too much, right? A little too much noise going on there. So let's, again, look at my noise. Um, just pause there and turn my frequencies down to three and maybe 0.4 for the scale and for the strength maybe 50 and then take a look let's look at advanced looking pretty good okay so let's add a couple more things here. I'm going to come back to our bell and I'm going to, on top of this transform, I'm going to add a soft 
lag deformer. Soft lag is going to do a couple of interesting things. I'll talk about it in one second. I'm also going to add a set polygon type so we can get rid of these lumpies here from our noise. And we'll just call it Catmull Clark. Now we're getting all smooth again. And again, maybe our noise, uh, noise is just a little much. I just want a, like a hint of noise. So maybe I want this more like 25 or 33% on the blend there or on the strength of our texture fall off. But let's look at um, soft lag. So if I press play here, soft lag is at 50%. The weird thing about soft lag, it's gonna add some nice sort of secondary motion. It does a sort of um, overshoot effect. Uh, you know, it'll just kind of continue the momentum of the points. But the weird thing about it is if I turn it up really high, it's, it actually minimizes the effect. If I turn it really low, the percentage, it maximizes the effect. So it's sort of inverted. For instance, if I turn it to 10% and then hit play here, it's, it's gonna be kind of going crazy in the viewport, a little too much. But if I turn it down to, let's say, turn it down or you know up to 85%, which is actually turning it down, it's actually gonna have a more of a, of a subtle effect. Just click the bell here. And so there, it's starting to look more like a jellyfish. All the noise and all the variations in our tentacles are looking pretty good. We've got a nice motion here. And again, because it's procedural, I can, you know, uh, come down here and, and, and stop the animation if I want to. And for instance, if our noise was looking too lumpy, like we didn't have enough resolution in the mesh, I could just come up here to go like curve rebuild and bump this up to like 48. And then radial sweep, I can bump this up to, let's say, 64. And then come up here to our bell. Let's turn off uh, soft leg and transform, turn them back on. There we go. And hit play. Now we have a little more resolution, a little more points to play with there. Looking pretty good. I'm actually going to knock down my scale amounts just a little bit. So my transform was if you remember my transform effector which you can get it from here or you can just find it over here in the in the item list it's 140 80 140 let's maybe do like 125 85 125 i'm gonna pop my schematic down hit space and play zoom in a little bit here yeah i think it's looking pretty good wireframe maybe so if you're getting slow playback, one of the things you can do to speed this up is, well, it's nice to keep this completely procedural and be able to adjust all your, you know, your, basically the resolution of the mesh. You can, uh, at this point, if you're happy with it and you think you've got enough resolution in there, I can right click on merge meshes and say freeze. And it's gonna freeze from there down. So now it's frozen, all those mesh operations under merge meshes and it just has the, you know, transforms, the deformers on it now, and a set polygon type at the top, and it's going to play a little bit faster. And there it goes. There's your procedural jelly. In fact, if I turn off uh, set polygon type, it's going to play a lot faster, because polygons calculate much faster than Catmull Clark Slip D. So anyway, hope you had fun with this. Uh, texture it nicely. Lots of references on the internet. Yum, yum.